Shmo ben Yaakov, we said, right? Friends of Kenya Lazinski, Mordechai, Shlomo ben Meir, Bella and David Adler, in memory of her father, Eliyahu ben Yosef Akohen. Those who were inspired by our Rebbe to the Merita, Sheila Shapiro, Sarah Esther Malkbud, Mashul Misachar, Gail and Leslie Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Mushka Shprutz, Bad Yosef Chaim Bechava, Hanan ben Moshe Eliezer Vechana, Pesha Bad Shmo Yitzchak Alevi Vitzipora, Isur ben Yoel Moshe Cohen Vechana. Rexford friends of Gladys Sherman, good to Bad Mayer. Michael Klein and friends of Judah Klein, Yehuda Tzvi Ben Chaim. Marsha Brown and memory of President Arav Yerachmiel Ben Shmuel. Friends and family of Arthur Ritholtz, Mordechai Yudel Ben Baruch Leib HaKohen. Friends and family of Siggy Bessler, Shalom Shraga Ben Dov. Friends of Marvin Weinstein, Mordechai Ozer Ben Yisrael Aharo. A month of learning by Haran and Mel Haller, in memory of her mother, Malka Rachel Badleib, Judith and Michael Peretsky, in memory of her father, Yaakov Yitzchak ben Hirsch Feibel, Isaac and Ed Novik, in memory of his mother, Miriam Gittel Bas Chanoch Henach. A week of learning by Manny and Carol Miller, in memory of his father, Svi Hirsch ben Menachem Mendel, Lela Bessler, in memory of her father in law, Dov Beresh ben Mishlom Shraga Feibish. Oscar and Shelley Moll, in memory of his father, Shlomo ben Yitzchak, and his mother, Rachel Bat Naftali. Today, we also have a day of learning by Leona and Walter Friedrichs, in memory of her father, Aaron ben Yankel, by Betty and Howard Zavin, in memory of her father, Pinchas ben Meir. And Hashem is having Aliyah, Krenk of Fear, Velti Yeshua Shemot Talia, Rachel ben Israel, a good Gaben Shia. Amen. Well, uh, Shimon told me just at the end of the year yesterday that uh, he discovered he had a doctor's appointment this morning. And of course, because yesterday was the holiday, there was no way that he could call the doctor's office and change it. So I will try to pinch it this morning a little bit. <laughs> What? Where? When, when was he nipple? Last weekend. More, actually, more than last week. Two weeks ago. No, he wasn't here in Shia for a long time. Unfortunately. Samich Aleph, Amud Aleph. Does that sound good? Okay, we are in at the Mishnah. On Samach Aleph Amud Aleph. Okay. All right. Um, I just want to uh, point out that remember, we have been dealing with the whole issue of uh, fire, if you will. Okay. Okay. And in doing so, Okay, we uh, find, as Shimon pointed out to us, there's a difference between, okay, providing those aspects of the fire, okay, and actually kindling or lighting the fire. Okay? And so now we're going to get to today's Mishnah, okay, is also going to talk about uh, two, what I'll call varieties of fire, okay, uh, if you've ever uh, seen pictures on television, or I hope I've never had to have seen it up close, you'll know that there's one kind of fire that burns along the ground level, okay, because there's uh, uh, leaves, branches, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And there's other kind of fire that sort of jumps from the top of, uh, of uh, trees, and then jumps over to the next tree, and so on and so forth. Okay? So if we keep that image in mind for a moment, okay, we can under better understand that the Mishnah and then the Gemara is going to deal with the question of what happens when fire gets transferred 
over a certain distance. Okay? Now, what is that distance? It may vary. Okay? It may also vary what is between uh, an area of fire and a second area of fire. If clearly, if there is some sort of water item there, okay, does the size of that water item prevent the fire from traveling? Okay? So as we go into the Mishnah, we'll, and then the Gemara, we'll see that the uh, it, it addresses that kind of issue. Okay. You could have you could have something large like a lake, right, Bob? Or remember, if we're talking about Babylonia, they had a lot of irrigation canals. Think of Florida, okay? Like we have in Florida, you have canals, or irrigation, or water runoffs, okay? And sometimes it has water in it, right? Michael's pointing out, and sometimes it doesn't have water in it. Okay, particularly if we think of Bavel and Eretz Israel, I'm sure many of us have traveled been to see that there are wadis, which are dry riverbeds, mm -hmm. okay? And they only flood at, okay, with water at certain times of the year, okay? Flash ones. All right, so that's where, just, just a little introduction, okay? Avra Gadar, okay, what happens here if we see that uh, the fire has crossed over past a certain fence? Okay, Shahu Gavoa Arba Amot, that the height of the fence is at least uh, Arba Amos, four cubits, right? O Derech Harabim, or it crossed over a public thoroughfare, okay? And we're going to have to see in the Gemara what do we mean by the width? of a public thoroughfare shortly. Uh, we're going to... Or above the height. Well, we're going to get to that, right. Okay? Oh, Nahar. Okay, or it crosses a river. Patur. Then the individual is exempt. Right? But haven't we been taught elsewhere in a bright? Okay? Which we're going to see is going to contradict our Mishnah. Okay? Namely, Avragader. Shahu Gavoa Arba Amot, okay, that if a fire crosses over, jumps over, let's put it that way for the moment, a fence that is Arba Amos for him, right? Chayav, that the person is uh, liable. Amara Papa, says Papa, okay, what happens here? He's trying to clarify. Tana Didan, Kachashiv, Milamala, Lilamata. Okay, our Tana, Okay, he's saying, okay, is what talking about where the fire starts above and then goes down. Okay, right? Sheish amot. Okay, it could be six amot, patur. Chamesh amot, patur. Five amot, pat, exempt. Ad arba amot, patur. Up till five amot. So the question we're going to ask ourselves is, is this fence... Okay, really starting at the ground level and going up, or no, is this fence above something, higher up, okay? Okay, and there's something below, and then you have the fence, okay? So what happens? <clears throat> so then Tana Bara, the Tana who taught the Brita, okay, how is he describing it? Milamata, the Mala, he's talking from down below to going up. That is his view. Okay? That if it's two cubits, he's liable. Three cubits would be liable. Up to four cubits, he would be obligated, liable. Amar Rava says, Rava as follows. Okay? Rava is going to present to us, okay, a, a, another perspective, right? Amar Raba, he says, Arba Amot Amru, okay, Upator, and where the one in our Mishnah says that it's four cubits and exempt, right? Afil Upasade Kotzin, even if it's in a field that is of thorns, okay? All right? Now, we can understand that because what was 
they wanted to get if they wanted to get rid of thorns, okay, in their fields, okay, there are certain flowers in Israel, but also in Bavel that grow with thorns. What would they do? They would try to burn it, okay, to destroy that uh, area. Okay? So what happens, right? So the um, so our Gemara continues. Amar Rav Papa says Rav Papa. Umisvat kutsim ulamala arba amo. So Rav Pap suggesting, okay, something different than Rava. Namely, we're talking about that the thorn bushes or thorn plants grow to a certain height, and the fence then is above that situation. So the height of a fence is four almost above the level of the thorns. Okay? Right? Amar Rav. So Rav suggests as follows. Okay, when are we talking about the situation? What is this uh, focus? Lo shanu ela bekolachat. Okay, we're talking about when the fire billows up like a column. Okay. Ava benich pefet. Okay, but if we're talking about a fire that's low, in other words, it proceeds and spreads along ground level. Because if, if your discussion, you're saying if it's a low fire, then the Gemara makes no sense that the wall could be a hundred. Okay. Well, it's if the fire, if it's not, if the blades is more or less vertical. That's versus right. where the wind. Was okay, you're assuming that it's talking about the wind. Otherwise, otherwise it makes no sense. Okay. <laughs> that may be. Okay. Right? If that's the case, if it's being blown, if the fire is low and it proceeds along ground level, okay, what happens then is that even if it were to be a hundred ama, he would be liable. Okay? Ushmoel Amar. But Shmuel says as follows, Mat Nitin Nik Pefet, okay, that the, the our Mishnah is talking about a situation where, again, it is low and it's going along the ground level. Okay, right? But, aval bekolachat, but if it's billowing up like columns and it's going to be jumping, so to speak, from the top, okay, and jumping along that way, afilu kol shahu pator. Even whatever the height is, okay, it, he, the person would be exempt. It depends how it goes, whether he's high of it. That depends on the wind. It, well, it may, okay, I did not find it discussing wind here, but I can accept Michael's suggestion that that could be a, a uh, aspect of what's being discussed. Okay? That may be something that the Gemara is going to raise. Okay? okay? No, just the opposite. I can't accept that. I can't accept it because a vertical fire is going up, but then we know that it can jump from the top of a tree to another top of a tree. There is, yeah. If you learn it with regard to wind, if the <laughs> fire remains vertical and there is no wind, even the lowest wall is a sufficient barrier. But if the wind is throwing the sparks over, then the even a, a hundred armor wall would be that's if, if you learn that it. Would, that's the simple. That, that's if you learn it with the wind. Okay. But, that's, but there's no other way to learn it and say there's no other way that, that you if, want to present if you're learning it your way then you can't argue that even a low wall is good enough we'll see, we'll see. Right. Tanya Kavate de Rav okay so there we could learn it according to Rav okay what are we talking about okay we're talking about those kind of fire that billows up in a column, okay? Ava b'nich pefet, okay, but what's... Do they have fire bushes? 
<laughs> okay. All right, but if it's the kind that blow that goes along the ground level, the eitzim la. Okay, and this is why I did not necessarily learn it from the what when I prepared it with wind, because it implies that that the it's the tinder, it's the ground, it's what's there in the ground, it's what's going to continue make the fire grow, I, move on the bottom. Okay. Then even in that case, if it's up to, if it goes an extensive amount of distance, the person would be liable. Okay. Let's say what happens if the fire crossed over a river or it crossed over some sort of a pool of water. Okay. Shehem rechavim chamesh amot. That it is a a, a shmona. I'm sorry, kamesh uh, amod eight uh, cubits. Then patur. The person would be exempt. Okay. Now we get to the next example from our Mishnah. Derech harabim. Okay. That uh, what happens if the fire crosses a public thoroughfare? Montana. Who taught this? Amar Rava says Rava. Rabbi Elazar. It's Rabbi Eliezer. Tznan, as we said, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, he says as follows: Sheish Shrei Amot Kederich Rishus Harabim Patur. Okay, that a thoroughfare that has a width of sixteen amos, okay, all right, okay, would be the situation would be exempt. O Nahar, or what about the river? Rav Amar Nahar Mamash. Okay, according to Rav, it's an actual river. Shmuel Amar, and Shmuel says, Arita de Dalai. We're talking there about what we would call a water channel or an irrigation uh, ditch. Manda Amar Nahar Mamash, according to the one, namely Rav, who said it was an actual river, right? Afalgav de Lekamaya even though it may not even have the water in it. Okay, so it could be a dry riverbed. Okay. And the one who says that it's more like a water channel. Okay, what happens? Okay, if there's water in it. And, okay, yes. If there's no water in it, low. No, that's not the case. Now, why might we think that's the case. The Gemara now is going to cite, well, it may not be a situation of, of the width. It may be simply a situation of whether there's no water in it or not. Okay? However, what happens yeah. to try to clarify the this, discuss, this disagreement in terms of the water channels, okay? All right. So we see now that we're going to talk for a moment and refer to another Mishnah that focuses on how a, a field is divided into separate sections and what divides them in regards to the issue of payah. Right? So we see the following Mishnah being cited. Tznan Hatem. It was taught there. Ve'elu mafsikin lepeya. And the following are considered uh, clear divisions to, to divide up a large field into what I'm going to call for the moment smaller areas where each area is going to be required to have pay. Okay? To bring pay, or the person has to bring pay from each of those sections. All right? Hanachal, we're talking about a stream. The Hashlulit, we're talking about a riverbed. Derech Hayachid, we're talking about a private uh, pathway, walkway. Okay, Vederech Harabim, we're talking about a public thoroughfare, public walk. My Shlulit, so the Gemara then asks for clarification on the phrase Shlulit. Well, we try to translate K hey, as a riverbed. Amar Rav Yehuda says, Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, and Amar Shmuel, Makom Shemei Gashmim Sholilin Sham. It's a place. Okay, where the uh, 
basically rainwater gathers, such an air. Okay, well, I didn't want to get there to that point yet, because I'm going to present the other. Rabbi Bibi Rabbi Yochanan. Okay, it says Rabbi Yochanan, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Emet Hamayim, Shemechaleket Shalal La'agfei. Okay, there he's saying it's a situation where it's more like a collection of water, okay, and it's more like it distributes a tributary of the water, okay? So are we talking about something that may be a large puddle, okay? That gishmamim sholalim sham, is that what they're referring to? Or something that is <coughs> built in there? Man amar makom gishamim sholalim sham. According to the one who says that it is a place where the water tends to gather, okay, which we could call a depression or a puddle or things like that. Kol shekein emet hamayim. All the more so, okay, then uh, would we talk about something that is a very clear tributary, a clear path, uh, okay? Uman amar emet hamayim. And according to the one who says it is a kind of tributary water, right? But, but the place that is simply, I was going to say, a depression, a, a puddle, a low point in the ground, that does not divide it up. Okay? The Hinhu, okay? Why? Why? Because those are simply puddles, depressions in the ground. Okay? So that's one Mishnah. Our second Mishnah now on the top of Ahmed Bayes. Okay, since we talked about the transfer of fire, okay, we're now coming back. We said that there was an issue separately in regarding to the lighting of fire. Okay? So the lighting of the fire might take place, I'm going to suggest for the moment, in one of two places. It's possible that the person is lighting the fire within his own domain, his own resource. It's possible that he might light the fire in a different domain, okay? If that's the case, all right, the commission is now going to tell us the following, all right? Okay. All right. Hamadlik betoch shelo. One who's kindling the fire within his own domain. Ad kama ta'avor hadleka. Okay, how far might the uh, fire continue to burn? And of course, the question really implies here, how far might the fire travel in his own property for him to be considered liable for damages? No. Let's, let's say within his property. How far from the next guy's property can his vertical fire be? And if it does damage, that's called going. Okay, you have a different shot than I. No, the point is, <laughs> okay. what is the like you build a bond? I understand. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. No, I understand. You have a different shot than I've had. That's all. Okay? Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariomer, We see him as if he's in the middle of a large area, okay? And therefore, he is not close to anyone else, okay? And therefore, if that's the case, what a distance might it be that the fire he sets up in his own property spreads and could impact somebody else's property. Okay? That's how I saw it. The red shot. Rabbi Elias Omer, he says, follows. He wants to suggest an amount. 16 amot, right? Ted Zion amot, kaderich rishus harabi. Okay. All right. Well, whatever. The, okay. All right. Okay. So what happens is he's making the comparison to our previous Mishnah, okay, that again, 
that there is a hefsake, the, the width of a public thoroughfare, based on what we saw from the previous mission. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Chamishim Amma. Rabbi Akiva gives a different measurement. He says it's 50 Amma. Okay? Rabbi Shimon Omer, Shalem Yeshalem Hamavir et Habeira. Citing the Pasuk, okay, Rabbi Shimon says that the one who kindles the fire, sets the fire going, okay, has a responsibility, okay, to pay for any damage, it would appear, okay? But our problem is, at this point, by citing the Pasuk, Rabbi Shimon doesn't appear to give a measurement, okay? Hakol lefihad leka. He says it may depend on the significance, the strength, the speed, the aspects of the fire itself. Okay. Again, we could come back to the question: if it's simple, if there's a wind, does that have an effect? If there's no wind, does it have an effect? So now Gemara raises the following point: Shimon Are we saying then that Rabbi Shimon? has no measurement here, okay, in regards to this situation of the fire? Vahatsnan. But aren't we taught elsewhere in another mission? Lo ya'amid adam tanur that a person should not set up a oven, let's say, a stove, an oven, okay, inside the house. Ela im kain yesh al gabo Ga'uva arba amo. Okay? In other words, there has to be above the top of the stove or the oven a certain distance, okay, between the top and the ceiling of the residence. Okay? Okay? What happens? Okay? Hayama mido ba'aliya. What happens if he's setting up this uh, stove or oven? On the second floor, okay, of the house, the attic. Ad shiyehe tachtav ma'aziva shloshat fachim. There must be, okay, below this oven or stove, enough plaster of that measures, right, three fachim, okay, be'ubekira. Filling up the second floor. It says tachtav, right? The oven has to be on, and because people it's, it, but if it's on the floor, Michael, do you want to give the shear? Thank you. Okay, okay. So what happens? All right, ubekira tefach. Okay, so it's one thing if it's a one kind of a stove or oven. Okay, it's another thing. If it's a different kind, and there also must be underneath, okay. The implication being that you have to have something underneath it to protect the ceiling of the first floor. That is the point of why it's saying, okay, that there has to be this plaster there, okay. The im hezik, and if it causes damage, mishale masha hezik, okay, he must pay for the item that was damaged. So the space above and the space below and the protection really doesn't make a difference as far as the Gemara is concerned because he's responsible no matter what happens. Hmm. We'll see. No, the point that it's trying to bring, if the point is, if, if, you've, if you've had, if you've put something that protects the, what I'm going to call for the moment, the floor, of the second floor, mm -hmm. which is the ceiling of the first floor. And you still have to keep it a certain distance above the ceiling of the second floor, okay? That person, okay, yes. might be thought to be patur, or not liable whatsoever, or minimally, it might be thought that if something happened, it, it, it they shouldn't be liable because it was, okay, the building and onus. To build at the bottom of the oven to, to the first to the to the ceiling of the first floor, basically. Well, the floor underneath. No, oh, you, have, the, the you have to have something underneath the oven on the, if it's yeah. on the second floor. Right. right. So you, 
do that. Right. So Rabbi Shimon Omer, he says it's false. Okay. Rabbi Shimon Omer, lo ne'emru shiurin halalu, ele she'im hizik patur milashalem. So according to, from what we understand this statement, that Rabbi Shimon does hold by certain shiurim, okay? But the purpose of the shiurim were given in order to indicate whether or not the person would be liable or not to pay. Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rabba Bar Abu. He says as follows in the name of Rabba Bar Abu. A call of fee gova hadleik. According to him, okay, it's based on the height of the flame. Amar Rav Yosef, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. In the name of Shmuel, halacha k'Rabbi Shimon. The law is like Rabbi Shimon. B'chein Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Shmuel, halacha k'Rabbi Shimon. And also, okay, again citing Rav Nachman in the name of Shmuel. The law is like Rabbi Shimon. Okay. So now, next Mishnah. Okay. Like once again, we start focusing on the person kin light, lighting or kindling. Right? Hamadlika Tagadish. Okay. One who sets fire to a pile, here we're talking primarily of wheat or barley. Okay. Vahayu Bo Kaleen. Right? And there were. Utensils, I'm going to use that term for the moment. Okay, inside that pile, the dolku, okay, and they got burned. Okay, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Mishalei Mashabatocho, according to Rabbi Yehuda, the person must pay both for the pile and for the destruction of those utensils. Okay, the Chachamim Omrim, but the sages say, a no mishalim ela gadish shel chitin or shel saori, but according to the sages, one only pays for the value of the pile of wheat or barley, and not for those items, those utensils, okay, that were hidden inside. Okay, and now a mission. The mission continues, and we've come across this uh, part of the mission previously. Hayagadi. Okay, kaput lo. Okay, let's say that there was a, a goat uh, tied up okay, near that uh, pile. Ve'eved samuch lo. And there was also a servant, okay, that was nearby. V'nisraf imo. Okay, and uh, both of them were, were uh, burned as a result of the fire that with the uh, wheat or barley pile. Okay, chayav. Okay, the person would be chayav, okay, for both. Uh, avar, eved, kaputlo, okay? All right, we're going to get, in other words, both. Okay, you can't get that. <laughs> True. The eved, kaputlo, if the, if the servant is the one who is tied closer to the, to the pile that caught on, was on, set on fire, okay, and therefore unable to escape, Unable to run away, okay. Ugadi samuchlo, and a goat was nearby this pile of of uh, wheat or barley that was set on fire. Vinisraf imo, okay. And those, though both items, the servant and the goat, were burnt along with the fire, with the uh, pile. Patur, okay. He would be uh, exempt. Exempt from what is our question going to be? Okay. All right. So the point that we want to understand here as we're going to continue, okay, is that we're getting to an issue of, okay, why does it say, what is he exempt from? Is he ex Before we said it, we, he would be liable for both. The death. Okay. So we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Right? Okay, so what do we mean by exempt? Umodim chachamim Rabbi Yehuda. Okay, and the sages would acknowledge the view of Rabbi Yehuda, the madlik et in a situation of lighting, setting a fire on a building. 
שהוא משלם כל מה שבתוכה, שכן דרך בני אדם להניח בבית, בבתים, okay? That we're at a building and it consumed what was inside, okay? They would be, he, the person who set the fire would be Chaya. Now, why isn't he Chaya for the death, for the death of the burning of the slave? Because he's going to be held culpable for killing the person, okay? Mm-hmm. And what is the, when we say that there is two situations here where one is a greater punishment than the other, okay? Then that, is, so he is exempt from the lesser punishment of paying the damages and guilty for the greater punishment of the death of the slave. Kim Rabin, right? Right? Okay. So that, now we get to the Gemara. Ama Rav Kahana. Says Rav Kahana, Machloket v'madlik v'toch shalo. The argument, according to Rav Kahana, okay, is this uh, situation of when the fire is set by the person on his own reshus, in his own domain. Okay? V'halcha v'achla v'toch shel chavero. And then the fire proceeded, it continued, and it destroyed property of his name. Okay? The Rabbi Yehuda Mechayev, and this case, Tamun Baish, that Rabbi Yehuda says the individual who lit the fire is responsible and liable then for anything that was concealed within the item and therefore burned by the fire. The Rabbanan Patre, and the rabbis then Exempt the person. Avab madlik betoch shel chaveru. However, when the person, okay, set the fire within the domain reshus of the neighbor, divrei hakol mishalem kol masha betocho. Okay, everyone is in agreement, both Rabbanan and Rabbi Yehuda, that he must pay right for everything that is inside. Okay. Amale Rava. However, Rava tells us as follows: Ihachi, if that's the case, Aditani Sefer. Okay, what about the fact where it's taught at the end of the Mishnah? Modim Chachamim le Rabbi Yehuda, that the sages acknowledge the view of Rabbi Yehuda, the Madlik et Habira Shemeshalim Komashu Betocha. Okay, that one sets fire to a, a building. Okay, he must pay for everything that is inside that gets consumed. Shekein derech b'nei adam l'hanich b'batim. Okay? All right? So that it's common for people to leave utensils and other items inside a home. Okay? And so therefore, he's responsible for that as well. So the Gemara now suggests, the flog v'litnei b'dida. Okay, so let him make a dis- distinction and teach it in regards to what, okay, is his. What are we talking about then? When we lit the fire within his own rishus, his own domain, and the fire spread and it consumed that which was belonged to his neighbor. Aval madlik betoch shel chaveru, but when, right? But when he lit the fire in the domain of his neighbor, divrei hakol, according to everyone, mishaleim kol ma'ashaya betocho. Okay, he must pay for everything that's within sight. Ela amar rava, but rather, okay, rava is saying the following in regards to Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis. Betarte plege. I argue on two different items. Okay? Plege v'madlik betoch shelo. They argue one aspect of their argument is that when one lights within his own domain, v'halcha v'achla betoch shel chavero, and the fire continues and spreads into the area of his neighbor. The Rabbi Yehuda Mechayev Atamun Ba'esh. Okay? V'Rabbanan Savrei Lo Mechayev. That Rabbi Yehuda says the person is liable for that which is hidden 
okay, and the fire consumed. And the rabbis are the opinion that their person is not lying. And the second aspect, the second argument between Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis, according to Rava, is that Upligi Nami Bemadlik Bashel Chavero, that also if he kindles lights the fire in the domain of his neighbor, the Rabbi Yehuda Savar, Mishalem Komasha Betocho, Vavilu Anake. Okay, that he would pay anything, okay, that is inside, even if it's a, let's say, a yeah. small saddlebag or a, or a small bag of water. Okay, all right? And it's possible that, that something like that, at least in their day, according to other places in the Gemara, people buried uh, saddlebags or, or bags of money out of side of the house, uh, usually by a, tr- the, by a tree or something like that. Okay? The Rabbanan Savre, but the rabbis are of the opinion, Kalim Shedarkan Lahat Min Begadish Kigon Morigin Ukle Bakar. Okay, certain utensils that people commonly hide or place inside a pile of grain, like threshing utensils. Okay, or yokes for cattle. Okay, who de Michelin? For that, the person would be responsible to pay. Kelim she'ender kan lahat min begadish. But those items, those utensils, where a person does not commonly hide them in a in a pile, lo Michelin, the person would not have to pay. Okay, we'll continue just a little bit further and then we'll finish up. Tanu Rabbanan. And we have a bright that tells us as follows. Hamadlik etagadish, okay? The one who sets fire to a pile of, uh, as we said previously, wheat or barley, right? Vahayu bo kelim vidoku. And inside that pile were utensils and they were burnt. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, he says as follows, Mishalem kol mashayabitocho, must pay for anything that's within inside. The Chachamim Omrim, and the sages say, Eino Mishalem ele gadish shal chitin o gadish shal soori. But he only pays to pay for the value of the pile of grain, of wheat or barley. The ro'in makom kelim, but they determined, says Chachamim, that that area where the utensils were kept, okay, is comparable, okay, to a uh, space occupied by the grain, okay, okay, it could be wheat, okay, whatever the grain is, all right, bamed varimovrim, just a tiny bit on the top of Samachbet. What are we talking about? When he when he lit the fire, okay, in his own domain. It then proceeded and burned into the area, the domain of the name. But were he to have lit the fire in the domain of the neighbor, Divre Hakol, I'm going to include here. Okay, right. Mishalem kol mashaya Okay, that he would have to pay everything that was inside as well. Okay, and we'll stop right there for tomorrow. Go ahead. Thank you, Rabbi Green. Okay. Thank you.